Tom, first of all, welcome to New York. I know it's a place you've always wanted to visit. At this point, does it feel like a different sort of fight week because you had little notice, or now you're here, you're doing all the media, it's just like any old week you're coming into? Uh, it's just like any old week, mate. Um, I've been here a little bit longer this time because I'm used to fighting in London, so I've been here for like um, four days already. I've got a little time to chill and um, get used to the time change and stuff, but yeah, regular fight week, mate. You've mentioned how you're going to do a Bisping for this fight. I remember when he fought Rockhold, he said, oh, the lack of notice meant he couldn't overthink it. Are you feeling the same way? Exactly the same. Exactly the same, honestly. Usually, with like a 10-week fight camp, I've got so much time to like... It's like just a massive build-up, whereas this time, especially because I didn't have my visa, that took a lot as well. So I didn't train, didn't have my visa, and I was just scrambling around like last minute, and before you know it... They just throw me into New York. I'm here. I don't even have time to think about the fight. So uh, I think it's working to my advantage so far, but obviously I've not fought yet. So um, we'll see. We'll see, mate, Saturday night. That said, it was pretty obvious this was the guy you were going to fight anyway, right? It seemed like he was the logical next opponent for you. So you've been preparing for him, even if you haven't been in camp. You've been preparing for this guy for a while. No. Oh. So in that case, what are you expecting? You know, everyone's talking about he's, you know, very dangerous early on. So are you... So maybe the tactic should be, oh, let's take him into deep waters and see how he does there. Or do you rely on your own ability to get them out of there early and just be aggressive from the opening bell? I don't know. I think it's heavyweight MMA. You've got to see what happens. Uh, he's a very, very dangerous guy, as am I. And um, yeah, mate, I'm just focused on going in there and enjoying it. Like, this is my absolute dream, fighting in Madison Square Garden. Heavyweight title. Pavlovich, like, everything... He's coming together, and I'm just going to go out there and do my thing and enjoy it. What does it mean to fight in Madison Square Garden? Can we switch it to someone who doesn't ask shit questions, please? Oh, that's very mean. Uh, no, it's pretty obviously it's amazing. It's amazing. I would not. I would rather fight in Madison Square Garden than anywhere else in the world. So, very excited about it. Okay. Last one for me. Chael Sonnen says the winner of this fight is the real heavyweight champion. I'm curious if you agree. Well, if Chael says it. If he says it, I will definitely agree. I, I'm not arguing with that guy. We see what that guy gets up to. I do not want to argument with him. So I would agree. Tom, um, who did you think would be your most logical next opponent if it, when you said no, that when Oscar just asked if Sergey was your most logical one next? Um, I wasn't really saying no to the fact that he was the most logical next opponent. I was saying no to the fact that I was preparing specifically for him. I wasn't preparing really for anybody. I was preparing for... Yeah, nothing. I was just in the gym training, helping other training partners who's got fights coming up and stuff. So I wasn't really preparing for anybody. And what did you make of Sergey's last fight? Because uh, when, when he fought Curtis Blades, a lot of people seemed surprised that Curtis wasn't shooting for takedowns. But I guess if you watch that fight back, Curtis was landing a lot of strikes. Sergey was just walking, th kind of walking through them and walking through Curtis's power. So what did you make of his last performance? Yes, I mean... I was also surprised that he wasn't going for takedowns, but like you say, he did have a lot of success just with... He, he was landing, so maybe he believed that he, one of them was going to land and put, put his lights out, do you know what I mean? So um, maybe he just got a little bit... I wouldn't say greedy, but he just got... You know, he was having success, so he was just sticking with that, so I wasn't too surprised, I guess. And then final one for me. I know a lot of fans were obviously excited for John Jones and Stipe, but it seems like in terms of an actual competitive fight, they seemed more interested in you and Sergey because you're new, two new names to the top of the heavyweight division. You're, you have like the record for shortest fight time and everything. So have you got a sense of that, that like these hardcore fight fans seem more intrigued by this fight than the original main event? I don't know because I've not been looking on social media, to be honest. I've just stayed away from all that. Like I've had a really, really short time. I've basically not had time to prepare, let's be honest. Um, two weeks isn't long enough to prepare for a fight. But... Um, yeah, I, I, any distractions or any, I'm just not into that. Like other people's opinions are other people's opinions and I just stay away from that shit, to be honest. I, I'm doing my own thing. I'm, uh, I'm here to win, of course. And I'm not letting anyone's opinions or whatever sidetrack me like that's their business and, and let them do their thing. Tom, down here to your right. Piggybacking off what Jose said there about um, uh, Jones and, and Stipe. Obviously, the reward would be fighting one of them at some point later this, uh, well, later next year. Um, how are you putting that to the back of your mind ahead of this fight? Because I know that you've said before on record that you've wanted to, to fight Jones and uh, be the first man to hand him a legitimate loss. And then, obviously, the prospect of fighting Stipe, who's considered the greatest heavyweight uh, of all time. Um, 
is, is a mouthwater in one for yourself. So how are you putting that to the back of your mind? No, it's quite easy to put it to the back of my mind, to be honest. I've got this absolutely massive Russian going to come at me on Saturday throwing absolute bombs. So if I, to, if I was to think past that, that would be a little bit silly. So I'm just focused on, on Pavlovich right now. I'm not thinking about anything else at the moment. And I know the fight hasn't rolled around yet, but it wasn't that long ago before you got into the UFC that you were struggling to have fights and that you made the decision to, to pack it in for, for a little bit. Is it a bit surreal now to know that you're going to be co-headlining at the greatest combat sports arena in the world? Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess so, but I kind of expected it as well. You know, I've had a c couple of tough times earlier in my career and stuff with injuries and uh, with not being able to get matches, and I was really struggling for money at a few points as well, which was tough because I've got children and stuff. So, um, yeah, it, I mean, it was, but also, on the other hand, like, I expected to be here. I expected to be UFC heavyweight champion. I expected to fight in New York one day, and, um, yeah, so it, it is and it isn't, like... When I think back about how far I've come and stuff, it's good, but I don't really have time to do that. Like, I think that's something that I'll look at maybe when I've retired because at the minute I'm just like in the moment. At the minute I'm just looking forward to Saturday and I'll think about all that stuff probably when, I've, when I'm done with this sport. And the odds are seemingly stacked against you. I mean, fight, taking this fight on two weeks notice is defying, d defying the odds something that you're relishing, that prospect? I like that. I like it a lot, to be honest. Um, I'm fighting the scariest guy in MMA, in my opinion, in the worst circumstances possible without a training camp. But I obviously think I can win. Like, I'm not the kind of guy who shows up for money or who, you know, I, I ain't signing a contract and showing up if I don't think I'm going to win. Like, I truly, truly believe that I can win on Saturday night and that I'm going to win. I'm an absolute winner and I'll find a way to win, no matter what the circumstances. So, um yeah, the odds are definitely stacked against me, and it'll be even better when I when I win the title on Saturday night. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Oh, hello, mate. Yeah, I mean, me and Bispin, are, Bispin is like my dear friend. I absolutely love Bispin. He's, but before that. Before we were friends, I was like a Bisping fanboy. I still am a Bisping fanboy. Like, uh, I think what he's done for UK MMA in uh, and just MMA in general is absolutely unbelievable. Uh, yeah, Bisping's always giving me advice. We're friends. We speak all the time. Um, yeah, he just tells me to just enjoy the moment. Don't let it overwhelm you. And that's what I intend on doing because that's when I do my best work. I'm not going to go in there on Saturday, mate, and take it too serious. It's not life or death, mate. This is a sport, and I'm going to go in there. And... I'm going to enjoy myself, win or lose. I'm going to enjoy myself on Saturday night, and I can't wait. Yeah, UK MMA right now is absolutely wild. It's so, like, the level of the guys in the UK for such a small country is unbelievable. Um, to be the third heavyweight, sorry, the third UK champion and the first UK heavyweight champion is something yeah that's what dreams are made of but again I'll think about that stuff mate when I've retired like right now I've got big fights to win massive fight on Saturday and all that stuff will be amazing but that's something for the uh, the kids and the grandkids when when they're a bit older Well, that, that's, the, that's the most important thing for me. Like, he, ask anybody who I've ever trained with. Like, I've trained at plenty of different gyms all over the world. Uh, obviously, uh, I've been training, mate, I've been involved with martial arts since I was eight years old and I'm 30. So, it's, it's been a long time. It's been plenty of gyms. It's been plenty of travel. There's been a lot. And every single person in every single gym will know my father because he's there literally every single session. Literally every session near enough from the time of me being eight years old to me now being 30 years old, he's been there. So, um, yeah, that'll, be, that'll mean everything to me to give him the title. Tom, just over here, just going off of that, you know, he's been such a, a massive part of your career. What was it like giving the news to him when you first heard that you would be taking this opportunity? 
Well, he, he actually found out last because, so the UFC called me early in the morning at like 4 a.m. I accepted the fight and they announced it straight away, which is something that I didn't realize that they were going to do. I thought they were like going to, I don't know, leave, leave it for a while or whatever. Maybe I'll let me sign the contract first. But um, yeah, they announced it like instantly at four, well, 4 a.m., but I don't know what time it was in Vegas, but it was 4 a.m. UK time. My dad woke up at like 9 a.m. or whatever, and obviously four or five hours had passed, and the whole world knew about it, and he had no idea. So he rung me, I was like, what's this about you fighting Pavlovich like in two weeks? So yeah, he was last, but you know, I feel like I'm ready to go. At, at the end of the day, it's me who's got to step in there, and if I feel ready, um, of course, if he turns around and tells, says, listen, you, sh you shouldn't do it, I will definitely listen to that, but um, he didn't say that, like he said. He was happy with it. And you have been matched up with Sergey before in the past. Obviously, they, did, you know, th those fights didn't happen. Did that give any advantage in terms of obviously the short preparation that you've had? I don't know because it was a couple of years ago now I was supposed to fight him. Like the last time I was supposed to fight him, and I think we've both evolved so much. Especially, um, I, I think I've improved a lot since then. Um, you know, I know his style and his tendencies and stuff, but the guy, the guy's straight up dangerous. I'm not even going to like beat around the bush and bullshit it. Like the guy is really, really dangerous if you play his game. So, um, I kind of know what to expect, but I've had a lot of fights at this point, and it doesn't always work out the way you think it's going to work out. Watching it on TV and then stepping in there in front of twenty thousand people and millions around the world, it doesn't always work out like you imagine in your mind. So, um, I think I know what I'm up against, but I don't really know until I step in there on Saturday. And you've never made it into the third round. So are you anticipating that this could go the distance? And how have you been preparing yourself physically for that? Um, I mean, I don't want it to go into the third round. If I can knock him out with the first punch, I will do. Do you know what I mean? If I can take him down and submit him in 30 seconds, I definitely will do that as well. Um, but if I've got to go five or three or whatever, like I'm happy with that as well. Like I'm pretty prepared. Um, I was keeping my body in dec decent shape. Ideally, I would have liked 10 weeks, but I've not had that, obviously. Um, but I'm a professional athlete, and I take my job very serious, so um, I'm always in decent shape. And you've said in the past that there's been some aspects of your game that you haven't been able to show yet because of the short octagon time. So do you think we see a different Tom Aspinall on Saturday? Oh, there's a million things I've not had a chance to show, but on the other hand, there's probably a million things that he's not had a chance to show as well. He's got really short octagon time as well. Um, the same as that goes for every UFC athlete, MMA athlete. Like we, we get 15 minutes, 25 minutes to show everything we can do. It's not long enough. So, um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of stuff there that I've got to show him uh, that he's never seen before, and I'm sure he's got a lot of stuff to show me that I've never seen before from him. So, that's what makes this sport so exciting, I guess. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just fine with the interim. I'm not too bothered. Um, it'll all work itself out, I'm sure. Um, John Jones is obviously uh, one of the best to ever to ever do it. I would love to share the octagon with him one day. Got a lot of respect for him. Uh, absolutely love his game. Massive fan of his. But um, as far as if it's for the interim title or the the vacant title, doesn't really bother me too much. Oh, I'd love I'd love to fight John Jones. I've said that all along. Um, it's no like disrespect to John Jones. I couldn't respect him more, like what he's done in the sport and stuff. Um, yeah, I'd like to fight John Jones after this for sure. Just on that feeling about the rest, how do you see it differently in that way? Because you've had a fight previously, and although not a full camp this time, but how, how much different mentally was it for you before the camp than it is now? Well, me pre-injury would have never took a fight like this. Absolutely never. Um, so I think that just... Uh, says where I'm at mentally, like I would have never ever done this before I injured my knee because I was struggling with a bad knee for a long time. Uh, my training now, I train with heavyweights like every day, every single day for the last of like 18 months now. So I know exactly where my body's at. Um, before I guess I was kind of guessing where my body's at a lot because I wasn't training with heavyweights regular. And now I train with heavyweights every day. So um, I know that I've got the size and the strength and, and all the rest of the stuff, the physical attributes to to fight and I know when I'm ready to fight and obviously I wouldn't have took this fight if I didn't think I was close to being ready so um, I'm much more confident now mate moving forward. Just 
Well, you basically, you, I basically can't find a weakness. He, I don't think anyone can look at his fights and be like, this is where he's good and this is where he's bad because he's not really shown much bad at this point. So um, I just got to do my thing. I got to. The biggest advantage that I've got is he's fought no one who moves anything like me because there's not a guy in the heavyweight division who moves like me at all. So you can't prepare for me. It's it's really difficult for my training partners who train with me every day to be able to figure out what I'm doing. So um, guys who have never experienced anything like my movement, that that's my biggest advantage that I've got. It's not his weaknesses because I can't look at his game and be like, right, he's weak there because he's not shown any weaknesses. So um, I just got to be bring things that he's not seen before.